Joining us live is Glenn Nagel. He's the Outreach Manager at the CSIRO Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex. Glenn, good to see you as always. Just remind us, what is a supermoon? How rare are they? So a supermoon actually happens every few months when the moon's orbit around the Earth gets it a little bit closer uh, to the planet. It's normally on the average around about 384,000 kilometres away. It gets around about 20, 30,000 kilometres closer at this perigee. And so it appears a little bit bigger in the night sky between 7 and 14%. So this particular supermoon, really nice one, because we're seeing two this month, two full moons. So great chance for people to get out tonight and have a look. Yeah, and what's the best way for them to do that? When should they look? When does it look the most stunning? A lot of people would have seen it last night, as of course. There are plenty of beautiful pictures out there showing the super blue moon. But what's your best tip in terms of people wanting to get out and see it tonight? Yeah, again, if it's nice and clear tonight, look off to the sort of southeast direction. You'll see the moon rising around about 6 p.m. Check uh, online just for make sure you know what exactly your local time is. Best time to always see it when it's closest to the horizon because it always looks larger. It's a little trick of the human eye, but it always stays the same size no matter where it is in the sky. But get that view when it's at your horizon with buildings and trees and hills in the way. It'll look particularly spectacular. Okay, good. We'll make sure we do that this evening. Glenn, there is some big news this week in terms of discoveries in space, this time to do with what's called a, a pulsar. It's a super fast spinning dead star, as I understand it. Tell us, what have we learned about these? What was the mystery surrounding them? What's behind that phenomenon? Yeah, these pulsars, these are rapidly spinning objects. They're about the size of a city, maybe 20 kilometres across but a star that is so incredibly heavy, the gravity is enormous, forcing the other atoms together, they spin at very high rates, up to hundreds of times per second. This particular pulsar has been a bit of a mystery, pulsar P1023. And every now and again, it sort of seems to get a bit quiet and then suddenly bursts up with lots and lots of extra power. So what's happening is it has another star, big star in orbit around this pulsar, and it's drawing material off that star. And every now and again, kind of like the way you might have something to eat, you're swallowing a lot of stuff, you might suddenly burp. Effectively, that's what the pulsar is actually doing. Quiet for a while as it eats the star. Every now and again, it just has so much that it needs to belch some of that out. So you get these huge rapid explosions. It's quite an amazing phenomenon. Scientists have been really interested about it for years, bit of a mystery. Now we actually know what's going on. A pulsar eating and having a bit of a belch. Right. I, lo I love how you put that. And we only know how it works because, uh, as I understand it, I mean, there's a number of different telescopes all working together to, to give us that sort, sort of insight. Yeah, so pulsars have been studied for quite a long time. In fact, Australia's Parkes Radio Telescope, run by the CSIRO, actually has the record for the greatest number of pulsar discoveries. So they've been an interesting object, these little signposts right across our entire galaxy, and now we're sort of starting to think about the way they would be in other galaxies as well. But this one, yeah, was particularly interesting just because of the way it acts. A little bit different to all the others. So now that we learn more about it, more telescopes are going to be looking at it. We'll learn a little bit more about how these strange objects work and what they could be actually to help us learn more about uh, things like dark matter distribution in the universe. We're learning a lot from pulsars and how their signals change as they reach our radio telescopes here on Earth, understanding that sort of missing matter of the universe that we believe is out there, dark matter. Now, despite all these technological advancements that we're seeing in this area, we know there are a lot of question marks when it comes to how space works, but we perhaps wouldn't expect to see a physical question mark lining up space. I want to show our viewers this pretty remarkable image which was captured by the James Webb Telescope. It looks like a question mark. Now, what do you think, Glenn? Is this some greater being playing with us here and mocking our lack of understanding of space? Are aliens sending us a message or is there a more <laughs> sensible explanation than that? We have a lot of questions about the universe. This just puts a fine mark on it for us. It is most likely the interaction of two massive galaxies colliding with each other, literally tearing each other apart. So you've got those two lobes there. The main sort of curve of the question mark is probably one galaxy that's been disturbed by the passage of that smaller galaxy passing by. And from our beautiful perspective here on Earth and those wonderful images from the James Webb Telescope, it's given us this cosmic question mark. And we see these sorts of strange things. It's a wonderful thing in the human brain, paradelia. 
to actually sort of make common objects out of seemingly random things. We see faces in clouds or, you know, shapes of dogs and puppies in shadows. This is a cosmic question mark and is a great way to actually think about all the amazing questions we have about the vastness of the universe around us. It absolutely is. Glenn, I always learn something when I speak with you. Really appreciate you joining us on Newsday. Thank you. Thank you.